Hello and welcome. In this video I want to show you how you can use your mobile to develop RAW files from the QCAM 8K without any PC. It's complete mobile workflow. My name is Bart and you find me as Flabic360 on Facebook, Flabic on Instagram. I make 360 photos, videos and tiny planets. And sometimes I also do some tutorials like this one. If you like it, please give me a like, give me some comments and yeah. Would be happy if you press subscribe and the bell. Thanks. Now we need our QCAM, a phone, and a cable. On the one side it should be a USB-C for the QCAM, and on the other side you need a connector for your phone. In my case, also a USB-C. This is also the original cable that came with the QCAM. So first we will turn on the QCAM. Go to the settings and here we have to select, I hope you can see it, USB and change to USB mass storage. The fan will go off. Then you can plug on the cable and also plug in the cable in your phone. Okay, now you have to open a file explorer. I need, wait, what, what's the name? Solid Explorer, but it should work with the most kind of explorer. Then you go to your storage area and then you will find a USB storage one. This is your QCAM. Yeah? Usually you have there a video and a photo folder. We go to the photo folder, then you have all your photos inside. You also see the DNG files. I have already taken some photos two days ago that I now want to proceed. Um, let me find them. Give me a second. Let me see the preview. This looks good. So I will copy the DNG file and also the JPEG file to my phone storage. Press the copy then select one of your internal folders where you want to have it. I will put them into my Snapseed folder, simply because I can. Done. That has been everything that you have to do with the QCAM. You can unplug it and it will automatically turn off. Put it away in a safe place. Now you need Lightroom app. You can also use another app that can edit raw files and will not reduce the re resolution of the photos. That's important. Otherwise, the QCAM app cannot recognize it and you cannot stitch it. Yeah? But in this case, I will add photos. Let me find them. Should be the 19, should be somewhere here around in this area. Open. This one is the correct one, okay. Then you have it in your photo area. You can open it. Okay. We can check the information. We see it's a DNG file. And, oops, sorry. Go back to edit. This photo has been taken on my roof window. The sky is correctly exposed, but as you see, the room is very dark. I choose this example because we can push with the DNG file the shadows much more as we maybe could at the JPEG file. First step, what I will do, and this is not a Lightroom tutorial, how to use Lightroom. This is I'll go for the result, that's the more important, not for a great photo. Uh, I press the auto button, there we get like starting points. I would say the exposure is too much. I will, yeah, reducing the highlights, pushing the shadows. I will correct the white point, I think this should be okay. And also look for the best blacks. 
yes, this could be fine. Okay. Then we can maybe press the auto color, um, white balance. Yes, this looks not bad. We can push a little bit the dynamic of the saturation. Maybe a bit, yeah, some, something like that. Okay. Um, here we can go for some clarity to give a little bit sharpness. Also remove the um, dehaze. Yeah, push the dehaze button a little bit to the right to get more information from the sky. Um, yes, so far that's fine. We go to the details. We push the sh uh, sharpness a little bit and m masking it a bit out that not everything. Uh, usually I would look more if when the settings are fine, but I think this should be good enough. Um, yeah, removing some noise. Uh, I think if we look inside, do we see some noise? Uh, that could be okay, and I see a lot of color noise. So we will remove it a little bit more too. Okay. What else? Um, chromatic operation will be removed. That's, I think, everything so far. Um, yes, it's not bad, but we can go to the selective uh, area and select the brush. Go to the lights, make a little bit of illumination. Put some lights inside the room. And also pushing the shadows a bit more. And I guess that the color inside is not correct. It's got a little bit of magenta, but okay, that's... Mm, I have the uh, plant lamp inside that's shining magenta. Maybe we can try to remove it a little bit. Uh, there. A little bit to the green. It should be more accurate and also gives a little bit push to the, to the warm color. Okay. What else? If we are already here, we can select a second brush. Go to the area of this houses here and pop a little bit the whites. White, maybe that's too much. This is not bad. This should look fine. Okay. Good. So far it's not the best edit that I have ever done, but I guess it will be good enough for this. Let me check. Yes, it's, it's okay. So, um, one thing, if you edit with a brush and or filters that only on some areas, pay attention to the borders of the circles because if you added it more in this circle not in this you will see it as a line later in the photo in the stitch photo so but now we can save the photo what's important is that no this is not when I choose the export save it as jpeg i take the highest possible resolution and i let the quality on 100% all metadata should be inside, that's fine. Let's save it. This will take a moment. Okay, now you can go back to your gallery and look for the Adobe Lightroom folder. There we have our photo, our edit photo as a JPEG with the complete original resolution. That's important. Now we have to move the photo to the QCAM folder. 
In my case, it's the QS4481010. I don't know if that's the same name for you, but you can find it in your QCAM folder. And after that, we can open the QCAM app. Oh. I think I didn't close it the last time, so let's open it again. So here we go to the um, gallery and we should find our photo. Is this one? No. Yes. Here we see a stitched version of the photo that we just edited. Yeah, as you can see, we can look inside the room and outside. Oh, I pressed the VR button, I guess. Cancel. Now, if we want to use it somewhere, we have to export it. So press the export button, share it to your gallery and share it as 360 photo. Uh, if we now look at this, we get uh, now it's in your QCAM folder. And if you open it, if your gallery supports 360 photos, it takes some time to load it. Here we go. If we now check the photo, we see a good photo with a good exposed room. Of course, we see a little bit of noise. This was one DNG file, not DNG8. I'm happy with the result. For a mobile workflow, it's not bad. I will now switch to my PC and there we can compare it to the JPEG file. Okay, here we have the unedited JPEG file. And this is the edited RAW file. I think it's hard to compare both because of the huge difference. Because of that, I added the JPEG file too. This is the version. Now I want to compare the RAW with the edited JPEG file. On the left we have the RAW file and on the right we have the JPEG file. So what's the obviously difference? The highlights. I zoom in for 100% and as you can see the JPEG on the right has much more burned out parts. Yeah. If we look at the raw file, we have the clouds above here with details and even here we have some small white clouds and all the dark areas behind that. Even the antenna is visible, even is not really good, but it's visible, not on the JPEG. And the uh, shadows. Let's take a look below the roof and here we have really black areas so there is no information in this JPEG file. We cannot recover anything from the shadows. And if you look under RAW you have much more information even if it's blurry and both are not really sharp at this area but we have the information. Colors, okay, of course, with the RAW we can't control the white balance and that affects the whole co colors in the photo. We have more colors in the sky from the sunset. It looks more natural, the sky look richer. Yeah, that's the benefit of the RAW too. Let's take a small look here for the trees. Here we have dark green, a bit, a bit not so dark like the other one. And between we have 
brown, normal brown. And if you look at the JPEG, it looks different. It has like a green, yellow overall and the natural colors are washed out. Something that I discover, if we like go for 300%, you can see it here on the roof, the JPEG look much more sharp. But if you look at the wall, you will see that there's more noise. Like we can also take a look at this area. We have here in the wall less noise. Okay, maybe it's my fault that I haven't done a good job at sharpening the raw. That's possible. But for the JPEG, you cannot do anything. That's the sharpness that you get from the camera. I hope Kendall improve the JPEG from the KuCam and reduces the sharpness a little bit. It's a little bit over the top, I think. If you look at the roof, this is over sharpened. The noise is really strong because of the sharpening. Uh, even if you have like a little bit more details and if you look in a normal view, then it's not so obviously, but maybe with a headset or in a 360 view, it will you will see it much more. Also, if you look inside the floor, and the JPEG is really noisy. It's not that noisy in the RAW. But please remember, this is where we come from. This is the JPEG unedited on the right. I push the shadows so hard that I got this result. For a JPEG, not bad, but the RAW is better. Let's go back to 100%. This should be enough. If you take a look in the room, you will see, okay, JPEG had much more noise, maybe a little bit of sharpness, but we talked already about that. If you look at the trash bin, the red color from the raw is the correct one, not this washout or too dark red from the JPEG. If we take a look on my face, I think it's more obviously that the JPEG is over sharp. If you look at my mouth or at the top at my hair, this is not natural. Overall, I think with the raw file, even if the process is longer than for the JPEG, it's worse. You get a better picture, it looks better, the colors are better, you have a better dynamic, and you can control the sharpness and the noise. I hope you like this video, and if you have any suggestions, maybe a better idea how to process, please let me know, and I hope you learned something and it helps you. Bye!